Hello, I thought it was about time to update you on the progress of the DIY BMS current monitor. Current monitoring is one of the biggest features which is missing from the existing system, and a lot of people have asked me about it. Uh, I started looking at a uh, design for this about 18 months ago, and at the time I wanted uh, these key design goals. So I feel it should be uh, standalone, so there was no capacity on the uh, existing AT, um, ESP controller. So standalone means it will run independently of the controller, tracking the voltage, current, and state of charge all the time. So if you uh, have powered off the controller or you're rebooting it or updating it, uh, the, the current monitor will still carry on in the background. It needs to be flexible in uh, that it needs to support a range of currents and, and voltages. So, you know, 50 amp, 100 amp, 500 amp um, needs to be able to, to support all those sort of things. Um, it also needs to be safe, obviously. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing this through a, an isolated uh, barrier between the high side uh, circuits and the battery and the 3.3 volt that the controller uses. It needs to be quite flexible in, in what it can support. So uh, it needs to support, support at least 48 volts uh, battery packs, which in reality probably means more like about 60 volts. Uh, I'm not going to re reinvent the wheel with this. So uh, using external current shunts makes, makes sense. Uh, hopefully something you can just buy off the shelf. And I also think um, I was trying to make, make this a, a generic solution. So it could actually be used by other BMS systems. So using uh, industry protocols like RS-485 and Modbus, I think is important. So the biggest hurdle was actually the lack of a suitable interface with the old controller and the ESP8266 chip. Um, purely I just run out of, out of, out of compute capacity and uh, the number of pins on those, those devices. The old controller needed upgrading and hence all the work and the distraction of getting the new controller to where it is today. So if you've, if you've not seen the, uh, the new controller, please check out the videos. Uh, there's plenty of them on there to, that tells you all about that and how to build it. So now let's take a look at, at a current shunt and what it is and how it works. A shunt is basically a very low value resistor uh, that can be used to measure current. The entire current of the circuit flows through the shunt and generates a very tiny voltage drop, which is then measured. To keep the power loss and heat generation to a minimum, shunts must have a very low resistance, usually milliohms. Now this might get a bit technical, but uh, if you paid attention in your school science lessons, you may re remember Ohm's law. If you had told me whilst I was at school that at some point in the future, I would be doing a YouTube video on electronics and showing my viewers graphs, I would have thought you were mad. Actually, I would have probably asked what YouTube was, but still, I digress. So the shunt I've just shown you was uh, rated for 500 amps and has a 50 millivolt output. This means that the resistance of the shunt is just a, a tiny amount. It's 0 0.0001 ohms. The graph on the screen shows a perfect uh, shunt, one that doesn't change with current or temperature. In the real world they do, but hopefully not by much. What this is telling us is that for smaller currents like 10 amps for instance, only a 1 millivolt signal will be generated. That tiny voltage then needs to be measured by the electronics in the circuit and turned into a meaningful value for use in the controller. Very small signals are difficult to measure as noise and interference in the cables and circuits hide and distort the true value. The other issue with shunts is heat. If we take a look at the 500 amp maximum rating of this shunt, we can use a calculator to see what power is consumed by this. From this calculation, we can see that 25 watts of power is consumed. This will nearly be all as heat. So it's important to keep the shunt in a well-ventilated area. Typically, a shunt also needs to be derated. So that is, um, we never actually use it at its full capacity. The data sheet for this particular version recommends about 66% of the total, or even less if it's used in a warm environment. By chance, whilst I was putting this video together, I saw a Facebook post describing this exact problem. This person has a RV with a battery setup running at 12 volts. He also has a 500 amp shunt and um, reported that when he pushes 350 amps through it, the shunt gets incredibly hot. Hot enough he can actually smell it. A further uh, Facebook post calculated that the shunt was actually generating nearly 40 watts of heat, so it was no wonder that the shunt got so hot. A solution to this was to ensure that the shunt was sized properly. This setup probably needed a 1000 amp shunt, or even better would be to actually get away from 12 volts in the first place and move to a 48 volt setup, which would then remove all the high current loads in the first place. So back to the current monitor. If we look at a block diagram of uh, what the device needs to do, we have the shunt, which sends tiny signals into an amplifier. This is then turned into a digital signal by an ADC, 
and then a microcontroller to handle communication with the DIY BMS controller using RS485. I did look at building a solution using components like op amps and high accuracy analog to digital converters, but at the end of the day, that would have actually been more expensive and a lot more work than a custom design chip from the likes of TI. And there isn't really any point in reinventing the wheel. The engineers at TI know what they're doing. I found this device, the INA228. This device appears perfect for our needs. It's custom made for the job, has very high accuracy using a 20-bit ADC, and uh, talks I2C to our microcontroller. Unfortunately, this part also added to the timescales, as it's a brand new part that's only just been released. You can see that on the data sheet, it was still being updated in January 2021. I couldn't actually buy any of these chips until a few weeks ago. So far with the circuit, I've uh, completed the initial design and the first prototype. Um, I've been using KiCad for that. I've sent the prototypes off to JLC PCB. Unfortunately though, these seem to have got lost in the mail. I've been waiting about six weeks for them so far. Given how new the uh, INA228 chip is, this also means that the current monitor board won't be fully built by the assembly services from JLC PCB. The circuit includes all the parts mentioned on the block diagram and also includes a step down voltage converter. The module can monitor circuits up to 85 volts. Isolation between the controller and current monitor is provided at the RS485 layer using an isolated driver. I've also added a uh, digital relay output on the board. This could be used to drive an overcurrent or over voltage shutoff and uh, further supports the use of this board in a standalone setting. As of now, I think I have a working design. However, I've not yet built it. I'm still waiting for the mail to, to, to turn up. Once I know the design is robust and tested, I'll obviously publish it in the usual way. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me to uh, know what content to create to help you on your own power wall and BMS journeys. YouTube also tells me that 70% of people watching this video have not subscribed. So please do so now. As usual, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters who help fund the prototypes and also sometimes the mistakes I make. Bye for now.